bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Now listen. Not my happy birthday. After the service, you choke. Among us, we born again. You sing happy birthday after the service package something in an envelope. Mommy, go out for lunch. Mommy, this is for a dress. Hey, happy birthday. Na nakava na bashtawa kwata mamanas. Hallelujah. Take your seats, church. We've been dealing with getting understanding for the kingdom of God. Understanding the kingdom of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ had only one passion, the kingdom of God. Our Father, the essence of our creation is one thing. Genesis 1 26 let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness and let that man we make let them have dominion that's the heartbeat of God let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness and that man we make let that man have dominion let that man have dominion I want you to hear what Jesus told his disciples. Matthew. Let's look at chapter 10. The only thing that was on the heart of Jesus was the kingdom. Look at Matthew chapter 10. Verse 8. Let's start from verse 6. Matthew chapter 10. Can we read verse 6 and verse 7 together? Matthew chapter 7. Sorry, chapter 10. Verse 6 and verse 7. 1, 2, 3. Let's go. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go. Verse 7. Let's go. Proclaim this. Pause, pause, pause. You know, Jesus does not say things like people to just say them just like that. Listen. Last week, we spoke about going. We said all of us are in the kingdom of God. And there is a command, there is a mandate for us to go. Go into education. Go into the private sector go into the corporate sector go into sports go into entertainment go into politics go into every area the command was go go into science and technology go into entertainment go into business the command was to go but look at what we do as we go As you go, preach. Tell somebody specifically. Tell somebody there are a lot of messages. Come on, tell somebody there are a lot of messages. Tell somebody, but as you go, there is only one message. Listen, as you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. And don't forget, when you are saying is near, he had not gone, the Holy Spirit had not yet entered into everyone. So now, it's no longer just near. Tell somebody, now it's within you. 
Tell somebody, now it is within you. Listen. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. That's what he told them. Now, I want us to see as they went, did they obey? Because a lot of people don't understand why is the church powerless today? Why is it not effective? How can you have a nation as a Christian nation, but the nation does not take over when it comes to leadership, when it comes to leading? As long as we are going, but what we are carrying is not the kingdom of God. We cannot carry the influence and the impact that we need to carry to affect humanity. If we are going to affect humanity, there is an understanding of the kingdom that we need to carry. Tell your neighbor, what people need is not religion. Actually, tell your neighbor, people are tired of religion. Actually, tell somebody, people don't want to have anything to do with religion. Do you know that as long as we are not pursuing and proclaiming the kingdom of God, to announce to people, to say, listen, why Jesus came, why he died, why he rose. Everything that we have celebrated in Christian Dome is because of one thing. Thy kingdom come. Why did he come? Because of the kingdom. Why did he die? Because of the kingdom. Why did he rise? Because of the kingdom. So when he was here, he told them, when you go, you have one message. Proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to see what happened when they began to go. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Look at verse 12. For context, let's start with verse 9. Verse 9 to 12. You can even push it to 13. This is when the church was now scattered. When everybody now was being persecuted and people went now everywhere. So I want you to now see did the early church follow his command? Did that young church that was born after he rose, after the day of Pentecost, did they follow the instruction he gave them? Verse 9 says, Now for some time a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. Meaning this guy took over a city. I want you to follow this. He boasted that he was someone great. And all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention. And exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. Look at how he deceived people. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. Verse 12. All of us together Verse 12, 1, 2, 3, let's go. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of, I am not hearing you, as he proclaimed the good news of, and they were baptized, both men and women. Verse 13, all of us. Simon himself believed and was and followed Philip how everywhere astonished by
by the great signs and the miracles he question to this intelligent church how does a man who controls the city how does a man who is called the great power how does he encounter a kingdom citizen and when he encounters a kingdom citizen he loses his power that's why I told you, the people don't need religion. This man had dominated an entire city single-handedly. Guess what? Single-handedly, a kingdom citizen went there and took the kingdom from him. Someone didn't understand that. Single-handedly, a man from the kingdom of darkness had dominated a city single-handedly. One kingdom citizen went there. He went there and took the dominion, took the authority, took the rulership. This man was called the great power of God. Look at the verse. I'm not making this up. Put for us verse 10. Look at this. Let's read together. One, two, three. Let's go. And all the people, both high and, gave him and exclaimed, This man is. Tell somebody, until you enter the kingdom, you'll be clapping for powers. Tell somebody, until you enter the kingdom. You will be clapping for powers. Listen. Verse 13. Simon himself believed and was amazed. And he followed Philip everywhere. Verse 13. Astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. This is one of them. Look at chapter 14. Look at chapter 14. Verse 21 to 23. Chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. We are looking at Jesus preach the kingdom. He gave an instruction to the disciples. When you go, this is the message. This is the only message. Go with this understanding. Manifest the kingdom of God. And we've seen a man go and take over a city with a kingdom. Look at another man. Verse 21. One, two, three, let's go. They preached the gospel in the city and won large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to what? We must go through many to do what? Talk to me. We must go through many to do what? 23 says, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Look at chapter 19. Look at chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Let's start it from verse 5. When Paul placed their hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Verse 8 together. Acts chapter 19. Verse 8. One, two, three, let's go. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly, therefore, 
three months arguing persuasively about about listen to that then some guys came and refuted him and brought confusion then Paul left took his disciples with him and he continued daily <laughs> verse 10 this went on for how long this went on for how long so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord what is the word of the Lord I, the correct answer what is the word of the Lord talk to me what is the word of the Lord the kingdom of God he entered the synagogue and for three months people they couldn't accept it he came out went to another place and drilled the kingdom for two years look at the effect Look at the effect. Verse 11. Verse 11 and verse 12. One, two, three, let's go. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that touched him were taken to the sick. Their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. They left them. Look at chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Look at verse 25. 25 up to 27. Acts chapter 20. It says, now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about doing what? Preaching the I don't know where the church got the confusion about Paul's message. Paul says, I have gone across the world. What I have preached across the world is the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. Everywhere I've gone. The kingdom of God. Now, people, this is too serious. The early church followed the instructions of Jesus. Let's conclude the book of Acts. Acts 28. Acts chapter 28. I want you to see this. Acts chapter 28. Never isolate a scripture and bring doctrine out of it. The Bible says in the mouth of two to three witnesses, a matter is established. Don't get one verse and create a doctrine. Error enters when you take a verse out of its context. Most of the errors in church were taken because somebody took a verse about a letter that Paul wrote when he was explaining something to people and they take a verse from there and they create a gospel. Are we in Acts 28? Come on, talk to me. Are we in Acts 28? Can we read verse 23 together? Acts 28, verse 23. One, two, three, let's go. They arranged to meet Paul 
on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. He witnessed to them from morning till evening explaining about what? Talk to me. Explaining about what? Talk to me. Explaining about what? Jump and go to verse 30. Acts chapter 28 verse 30. Acts chapter 28 and verse 30. Let's read verse 30. Even 31. One, two, three, let's go. For two whole years, Paul stayed in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. Pause, pause, pause. For how many years? <laughs> and don't forget, in case you don't understand the time frame, these are the last two years of his life. We have seen his entire life and ministry is preaching one thing. We are now looking at the last two years of his life. Let's read verse 31. One, two, three, let's go verse 31. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. And with all boldness and without hindrance he proclaimed the kingdom of God then he taught them from whom he lent it from our Lord Jesus Christ why did he come why did he die everything our Lord Jesus Christ did was to bring us back to Genesis 1 26 please hear me Everything our Lord Jesus Christ did was to bring us back to Genesis 1, 26. The place of kingdom. The place of rulership. The place of dominion. Now, something has to happen today in your understanding and in every person's understanding. Something has to happen today. I, I want to show you something because if you don't understand this, you will see how the Pharisees got the kingdom, but they couldn't accept it and couldn't enter. Look at somebody and say, I hope you are not a Pharisee. Tell somebody, say, I hope you are not religious. Matthew 23. Look at this, Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Can we read verse 13 together? Matthew 23. Verse 13. Matthew 23. Verse 13. One, two, three, let's go. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces you yourselves do not enter nor will you let those enter who are trying to how can someone stop you from entering the kingdom of God when they keep postponing and they keep putting the kingdom in the future. Religion has got a tendency of echo to layer. One day. Religion has got this concept that in Atwaya, Twakula Shana Chipuna Chamushilo Mushilo. Are you following me? When we enter through the streets of gold, that's when we have peace, that's when we have joy. That's when, no, the kingdom of God is here now. The kingdom of God is not for the future. Hear me, 
religion pushes the responsibility of you accessing and manifesting the kingdom to the future you will be well in the future you will be blessed in the future you have things in the future God didn't say that he said seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness meaning enter into it now don't postpone it don't push it to the future the kingdom of God is for now it's not for the future hear me in heaven there is no sickness you need health now you need healing now in heaven there is no rulership you need to rule and to reign now in heaven you are not taking over anything daddy is the king oh my god give me Psalms 10 give me 103 I want you to understand this Psalms 103 Psalms 103 oh God will bless you this morning Psalms 103 look at verse 19 stop pushing the kingdom in front stop pushing it to the future can we read this together one two three let's go the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all listen God has established his throne in heaven and the kingdom that he has he rules over all but why are we not seeing the kingdom rule in Zambia why is it not ruling in industry why is it not ruling in education why is it not ruling in politics why is it not ruling in media why is it not ruling in science and in arts the church is pushing rulership in the future instead of taking over now instead of believing it and this is where now your faith comes in because without faith you can't access this kingdom Matthew, Matthew 18, my God. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Let's start it from verse 1. Matthew chapter 18, from verse 1. Follow this. I want you to follow this discourse and this interaction. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of are you following that who is the greatest in the kingdom of listen to his answer verse 2 he called a little child and had him stand amongst them Kalamba. Now we push it, you push it. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You are talking about the kingdom. You keep teaching us about the kingdom. Umwinem kingdom. Nina numukari. Who is the greatest? Who will go up? Listen. He called a little child and had him stand amongst them. Verse 3. All of us, let's read church. One, two, three, let's go. And he said, I tell you the truth unless you change and become like little children you will never enter the kingdom of heaven he says you are too much of an adult have you seen when i say you must enter politics you must enter entertainment. Have you seen that adults are calculating? Aba karamba, aba kwatamano, aba ishwalai fe foyaba. Oh 
my God. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like a little child, like little children, you will never. Why can people enter the kingdom of God? They are too mature. They are too grown. They are too civilized. The kingdom of God is for children. Like Wes Manasseh, who believes that him and his father can take over. Oh, you are missing it. A child. My God. Umwana. Takwata doubt. Aba kala mbewa kwata doubt. Oh, my God. I tell you the truth. Unless you change. God says, as long as you mukalamba, wali kwata mano, wali shwe fintu, ula kakuleta, wali sambilira. He says, you are not entering the kingdom of God. He says, the people who enter the kingdom of God are children. When God says, take over Zambia, you say, yes, Lord. Take over, enter into the political arena. You say, I am your servant, Lord. When God says, I'm looking for a businessman. A businessman who will be kingdom-minded. Someone we can make money with. You say, I'm here, Lord. God is looking for children. Not adults. Why have you stayed where you have stayed? You are too much of an adult. You are too much of a grown up. Why haven't you moved? Why haven't you walked into certain things? You are too much of an adult. God says, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children. Oh my God. You see, you, calcul you are calculating right now, mm, Pastor Manasseh. We go into every sphere. We go into every, we take over. We are the ones ruling. Mm. Is that possible, Pastor Manasseh? Because you are an adult. Do you know if I bring a child here and ask them, what do you want to be? Malakov, I want to be president. <laughs> what do you want to be? I want to be a pilot. What do you want? A child believes. Oh my God. A child has no fear. A child has no uncertainty. God says, except, he says, unless you change. That's today's message. Message, unless you change. Nemwe batikabie pansa lela ndati Nomba pale yaka soba Mwalisho wa karamba ka? <laughs> Kabie Se inda lama sha kwende la narashifumi ya kwezi Lesa lela ndati iwe Eko waika la kuchitentoko Kwa li babantu Aba nabanshi wa vengi Ndefwa wa ubakolonganye Wambe ukuma chita minister tu Hata mwelesa, enda lama shako wali isha shikafu makwisa. Aba kalamba, bala kakuleta. Mwalisho alese wafwa ya mkindo. Aba ana, aisakuli Abraham. Abraham, leave your family. Leave your relatives. Leave everything you know. Let's go to a land I will show you. I'm Abraham. I'm Bokwenda. Ewole Safwaya. Abana. Not Abakalamba. Abalela and Timwe. Kuti umuntu wa nomo. Kuti wa shefo wa ishiva. Wa shaba bluru mobe. Uye kuple satele sakakula angisha. Give him a clap offering. Abakalamba. 
Habaya ukuri konse mu kingdom mu kingdom ewalesa abomana bo bana Ai sai sai ba prophetess to say if you for nachita ndefo pelo bunte ke mie pa tv ubebe atilesa namposha forget if your blood is showing a positive umwana aya pa tv zdnbc aya landa le sali mposha abakala mbabonse tete mulande ichirumba bakamona ndalirwe le hiv status stigma abantu bakamona shani Nama ministries tayamba because testimony for achitalesa mukachini mule sunga mukachini na muika lapo because muli bakamba let's say a fire mana a fire mana lelo a mana beme a mana kongalesa my God I wish you could hear the voice of God God is looking for children. A child who say, I'll stand, I'll tell the people I was healed of HIV. Forget about status, forget about a name. I'm a child, I don't have a name. And she'll stand and testify on ZNBC, on national TV, that God healed me of HIV. Today, you have back ministries. Because a child listens. A child listens. We have too many adults. God tells you, give this to God. An adult is calculating. But because you are an adult, We need to pray. Stand, church. God is looking for children. I said, God is looking for children. Someone is not hearing me. I said, God is looking for children. Amen. You tell a child something, go and tell this one, that one, they'll go. Today we don't have children who can go and tell people about Jesus. We don't have anyone who's a child enough to proclaim the kingdom of God. Christianity, Christianity. Because we don't have children. We have adults who have status. We have adults who can talk about the kingdom of God. We have adults who are conscious about their life and their status. Children are not like that. Children mingle with everyone. Do you know children don't know anything about race? Do you know children don't know anything about gender? Do you know children don't know anything about the politics that people go through? Children don't know anything about that. They are pure. They just want to relate. They just want to do what is instructed of them. Listen, he says, unless you change, I can't change for you. This has been hitting me because God has been calling me to be a child. And now everything about me is no longer about me. Because now I'm a child. It's what he wants. It's what he says. That's why you're hearing me say the things I'm saying. I'm not afraid to declare. I'm not afraid to enter and take cities. I'm not afraid to take nations because I'm a child. When you're an adult, you will calculate. Hey, Mukashani, my cities. Mukashani ma nations. Baka fuma kuisa wa shuma pepa wa kutuma. Hey, iwe expansion mule landa. Fika fuma kuisa. Baka la mbabo. Walebo mfia mano. Fweba iche to believe afie. Aba kalamba kumurunga ba ponya impression. Wasenda fia. Thank you Lord. Ngefio mule landa tefo tuwala chita 2021. Tuwapokelela. 
Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Pray after me, Heavenly Father. Thank you for today. My Father, I have seen that the message that you gave your disciples was the kingdom of God. I have seen in the book of Acts they preach nothing but the kingdom of God. My Father, you have said except I change and become like a child I will never enter the kingdom of heaven my father this morning I ask help me change to become like a child no fear no uncertainty no worry no doubt let me become a child in my attitude a child in my heart that from today let me believe everything you say let me expect everything you tell me from today let me not fear anything my father let me have the faith of a child to go where I've never gone to mix with people I've never mixed with today change me into a child so that you can work with me in the kingdom of God Holy Spirit this is new to me I've never been a child at this age in my attitude in my heart help me remain a child I ask this in Jesus' name lift your right hand let me pray for you daddy that's the word you gave me you said unless we change and we become like children you can't use us we can't manifest the kingdom as our doubts Daddy, today the word has come. Let this word germinate. Let this word grow. My father, from this service, from this altar, let children, my father, manifest. Let there be a change of attitude. My father, let great men and women rise. The way you've ro you have risen with prophetess, Daddy, she became a child. She didn't think of her life. She didn't think of her status. And Daddy, you rose in her a great woman. You raised her to be a general. Because she has remained a child. She has remained a child. And you have made her great. Truly, your word is true. The greatest in the kingdom are children. Help us become children. Work it in us, Holy Spirit. I ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a better cup of.